Welcome to another video, a game development video with your old pal Wizard Fu. Made a lot of improvements in the last few days. Kind of had like a power coding session and just got a lot done. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and kind of like mention everything. Um, for one, the camera rotation is a lot smoother. Um, I had something that was, that was there, there's a few glitches still where it's not quite moving as, as smooth. Hold on, let's restart this and you can see before any other players come on the screen, if I rotate the camera, it's a lot smoother. Um, and that is due to not, uh, before I was only ticking the camera rotation every fourth tick. So, um, that's, you know, 0 0.01666 seconds per tick. Uh, that's one sixtieth of a second. And um, so four ticks would go by before it would actually move the camera because it was a lot of work to move the camera. But I found out some optimizations um, I could do and uh, implemented those and was able to get the camera rotation to be um, this much smoother. There's still some few more things I can do to make it more smooth. Um, <clears throat> and let's go through a lot of like just tiny little fun things, a lot of fun improvements. Um, I call it fun because it was fun for me to do. It was very enjoyable for me to make all these improvements. Um, you can see these little lanterns right here that are floating. They're glowing and they're the color of your team. And those were fun to implement. They've got particles floating next to them and they have a, a light, a glow that's happening. And that's just kind of, uh, it's really nice. Um, it sort of uh, reinforces your team's color, but also gives you a nice contrast. So then, then um, and also, so when you when you go from one set of lights to another, you can see Gosh, I wish there was a way for me to clearly show you, but each one of these lanterns actually has a two-dimensional light that is done with the shader. It's a little oval. Oh, I just died right there. And uh, that oval will change. So as I go to those that other set of lights, they work too. And before it didn't work because um, it wasn't. It was only doing the first four lights. Like that would happen to be the player right here. This. This first player would have his lights, but every other player wouldn't have lights. Now it's basically dynamic. So as you move around the map, um, it re it changes it detects the two D position of each light and um, and basically puts the lights on screen dynamically depending on what is actually the lights that are actually on screen. So um, another uh, improvement I made to bases was that. Um, these pillars right here, I made them a little shorter. So when I stand right here, you can see, you can still see uh, most of the upper half of the player. Before, you really couldn't see, you could only see like the player's eyes and above. And that just, I don't know, it sort of made it, it harder to see the player. Um, and then I've, uh, this is kind of, I kind of messed this up here, but um, there's normally a staircase right here. I'll, I'll re-implement that. But you can see that this big, this thing way up here, there's this sort of staircase going up way high, and that also helps you see better um, when the when the level is, when I fix this right here, you'll see that these staircase will be, be here, and that staircase will be way up high, that one. And um, that means that it, you can just see better. As you get to, especially this, um, this camera angle right here, you couldn't really see the player at all when you were standing about here, but because now this staircase is really high, this one, um, you can see the player during, at that little point. So another thing too is that the entire battlegrounds is now a little bit smaller. Um, I've made it smaller so that it's more fun for eight players. I'm imagining the old size I had would be mm, appropriate for about 16 players, but I think that eight players is going to be a nice number of players to have in this game in general. So I'm trying to make it a, a battlegrounds that's about the right size for eight players. I basically just added a simple factor which can because the level is entirely procedurally generated, um, it's all generated with code, um, I can just add a simple factor. And right now the factor is at three quarters. So it, instead of it being about 1.0, it's now down to about 0.75. So that means the level is um, just a little bit smaller, a little bit more comfortable for eight players. So gosh, there's a lot more improvements. Oh, there's, um, let's reset here and we can see some more. Uh, when you hit a player now, the player flashes red, and it's a lot more obvious than it used to be. So let's um, let's go hit a player, and also there will be a beam of light that comes down really quickly. Whenever you connect and you make an actual damaging hit, there, there's a short little beam of light. Um, and that just sort of shows you that you're really connected. If you hit the player when their shield's up, you won't see that beam of light. So then you, you just know um, that at a glance that you, you made a connection. It's sort of intuitive. 
Um, and let's go, let's kill this player there. So there's this big old beam of light when the player turns into a wraith. So it's a lot more obvious that, an, that a player turned into a wraith nearby when, because of that big beam of light. Um, that's kind of, that's kind of most of the changes I've made recently. Um, gosh, there's really not much code I need to show. It's more of like artistic stuff that's been changed. I even went and, um, uh, redid all the art for these pillars. So as you crush them and they get smaller and smaller, they're, they sort of look just a little bit more unique. They, let's get them all. Let's get a couple of these completely just destroyed. There we go. Now you can you can walk on top of them when uh, I died. Now I'm a wraith, glowing or I mean semi transparent. So uh, so there you go. As you can see that these I'm walking on top of a few of these and they they sort of get beaten down and I plan to have uh, I, I actually have an idea. I think I'd like to change these. These lanterns right here make them so you can able, you can destroy them, but only uh, the other team. So if you hit your own lanterns, it doesn't do anything. But if you if you hit the uh, the other players' lanterns, then you can destroy them. And I'm thinking that maybe at your base you can heal as long as you have four lantern or a lantern. But if not, this whole victory condition isn't really working. So let's reset there. Uh, if you don't have if you have all your lanterns destroyed, then maybe you can't heal. But I think that would probably add some kind of tendency for players to hang out at their base a lot. I don't know, maybe that's a good thing, maybe that's not. So I'm going to try experimenting with that where you can heal at your base if you're standing right, like, you know, somewhere in your base. You can heal probably slowly. That would be the, the right way to do it at first. You heal really slow. So it's not quite as much of a tendency you'd have as a player to just hang out at base the whole time. Uh, so there you go. Lots of little fun improvements. Got to have having this like sort of power code sessions and just going quickly doing as many fun things as I can fun for me and it kind of turns out to be fun for the player too so thanks for watching this video that was weird that player just turned came out of nowhere which makes me think there's got to be some kind of invisibility soon so there you go thanks for watching see you next time